My name is Doug Shear. I'm from Miami. Right now I teach marketing. And when I retire, I plan to just keep writing. I had just graduated college with a degree in English literature, also known as a Bachelor of Unemployment. <laughs> I tried fishing around for a job, but didn't have the right bait. So I thought I would give fishing a try. As it turned out, I was very successful at it. Each morning, I would join dozens of old black fishermen on the Tamiami Canal near Chrome Avenue, cast a line into the brackish water, and eventually pull out a thrashing fish. The first time I caught one, I thought it was a snake. Long, dark brown, and slimy. It had black flecks and black eyes. I asked one of the old fishermen what the hell it was. He said, mudfish. I said, is it edible? He said, I eat it. <laughs> then he grabbed the mudfish by its cheeks and squeezed it like a rubber change purse. Its mouth was filled with sharp teeth. I was hooked. I went mud fishing every morning, then came home before dark. I poured my catch into the kiddie pool in my parents' backyard. My plan was to save up enough for a fish fry. In a month, I had dozens. But without a filtration system or chlorine in the water, or chlorine, the water had turned swampish. Algae clung to the plastic. There was a bitter smell. The mudfish didn't mind. They just swam around and around like little lost souls. A week later, my older brother, Phil, moved down from Denver. He couldn't believe I wasn't looking for a job, that I was spending my days mud fishing. He called the kiddie pool a toxic waste dump. I thought he was going to poke a hole in it, but instead he went to the backyard and got his own bamboo pole. <laughs> Phil and I fished until we ran out of worms. We were too broke to buy a new box. We were living in our childhood bedrooms, but our parents didn't approve of our mud fishing career. <laughs> after they had mortgaged their home to put us through college. But we just weren't ready to join the real world. Between the two of us, we were recovering from broken hearts, drug abuse, and a stint in a Kansas prison. So we got shovels and pickaxes and dug for worms in the backyard. They were smaller, skinnier, and lazier than the store-bought worms, but if the mudfish liked them less, they didn't complain. We continued to catch mudfish and dump them into the kitty swamp, which was now home to thousands of tadpoles and lizards, black and red ants, fuzzy gray stink bugs, dragonflies, and mosquitoes. Then disaster struck. We were at the canal when a sheriff on horseback came trotting over and demanded to see our fishing licenses. For reasons I can't imagine, I possessed one. <laughs> Phil did not. The sheriff dismounted and gave him a ticket for $40. Then he got back on his horse and trotted past dozens of old black fishermen, whom I suspect did not have fishing licenses either. That was the end of our mud fishing career. As we gathered up our stuff to leave, the old black fishermen wiggled their hands goodbye. It was time for a mudfish feast. We knitted out half a dozen, cut off their heads, scraped off their slimy scales, and gutted their guts. To our surprise, they were still flapping when we presented them to our mother. <laughs> Dad took one look and suggested McDonald's. But mom, with that old world lack of squeamishness, said, maybe they'll settle down after they're breaded and fried. <laughs> they stank as they cooked. The meat was dark and sticky. Phil took the first bite, told me it was delicious, then gagged and spit it out. <laughs> we had to wear t-shirts around our faces as we scooped out the still living mudfish and crammed them into buckets. We drove them to Chrome Avenue and dumped them into the Tamiami Canal, then watched as they dissolved into the murky water, no happier or sadder than before their backyard adventure. But we were sadder. We knew we couldn't swim aimlessly through life forever. We knew the real world was fishing for us. That was a long time ago. For Phil, mud fishing was a complete waste of time. Life soon hooked him and reeled him into a real job and real money real estate. I managed to swim free for a few more years, but eventually got snagged. 
I spent several years in a corporation until I was tossed back into the canal. So looking to make a little extra money, I registered with Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County as a nuisance wildlife removal expert. <laughs> and although my only qualifications for the job are a working knowledge of Google and mud fishing, <laughs> I've answered several calls. I've been asked to remove raccoons, black snakes, even a wounded duck. I knew the perfect spot to dispose of them. It's on Chrome Avenue next to the Tamiami Canal. <laughs> Just recently, when the state issued the call to hunt for pythons in the Everglades, I thought it might be a nice gig. The pay was good, but I couldn't do it. The Everglades is like a giant kitty swamp. It's got alligators and pythons that eat alligators. Hunting for pythons is sweaty, hard work. No, I'll just float around for a while and wait for life to catch me again. In the meantime, I know a place where dozens of old black fishermen while away their days. Perhaps I'll join them again Monday morning. Thank you.